Hi, I'm Rocco Stano and welcome to Storymakers. Today I have the senior meteorologist from Fox News, Janice Dean. Welcome Janice. Thank you for having me Rocco. Yes, I think people are probably wondering why does Rocco have a meteorologist on Storymakers? I think everyone should have their own personal meteorologist, don't you think? Yes. Weather is what connects us all every single person on earth. You know, just yesterday I was in the elevator and someone got on the elevator and we started talking about the weather. So yes. it's something you can actually chat about all the time. It starts discussions, yes. it's fantastic. Yes, but you have actually uh, have a project where you're bringing kids and weather together. Tell us about that. Well, uh, I've been at Fox for over a decade now, and in my years there, I've had a lot of people that have asked me, can you recommend good books for my kids or my nieces or my nephews? Because they have a love of weather. Can you, I want to encourage that love of weather. And so I did my research, and there's certainly ones out there that are very technical, and there are ones that are very simple. I kind of thought it would be great to have something in between where you can actually tell kids why weather happens, what's a low pressure center, what's a high pressure, uh, why does a thunderstorm happen, so that kids and parents can get together and the parents can explain why things happen in the atmosphere and that perhaps can sometimes take the scare out of really a uh, situation. And your character is Freddie the... Freddie the Frogcaster right. and Freddie has been forecasting the weather since he was a little tadpole. Mm -hmm. His first words were rain and he was correct. Uh, so, you know, he, his love of weather was encouraged by his parents. Uh, they bought him a lot of weather books uh, so that he could look at different cloud types. And he has a backyard weather station that his dad put together. So they encourage his love of weather and he gets so good that the neighborhood starts to, th starts to ask him about the forecast. And he gets it right sometimes, more often than the actual frogcasters on the Frog News Network. Uh, so that's how the books began. Uh, there's three of them now. I'm very proud of them. And, uh, you know, parents and teachers and kids are getting together and finding out why things happen. Right. And the first book was Freddie the Frogcaster. Mm -hmm. And when did this book come out? That came out in 2013. So that's the introduction of Freddie and uh, he forecasts a thunderstorm that's going to move into the picnic uh, and so that is the beginning of his flourishing frog casting career is that he helps save the town picnic from an impending thunderstorm. Yes, and you mentioned the uh, other frog, uh, the other frog casters. Frog casters. Right, Polly and... Polly Woggins and Sally Croker. Yeah, and Polly isn't exactly a very good uh, forecaster, is she? Well, it's not that she means well. Polly means well. She's new into the frog casting business and she wants to do everything. She wants to be out there in the elements. She wants to be experiencing the gusty winds and the, and the rain. And so sometimes she doesn't really focus on the science behind the weather mm -hmm. and instead sort of focuses on maybe should wear, she should wear her purple hat or her purple mittens to match her purple jacket. So, but, she, but in the later books, she evolves and she starts to understand that it's sometimes better to know what you're talking about than right. what you look like on television. Well, as a broadcast meteorologist, uh, you have uh, the uh, job to make uh, the weather interesting. I mean, weather is in interesting when it's either going to be beautiful or treacherous, mm -hmm. but you know, just a regular day, you know, weather, a, a, media, a TV meteorologist mm -hmm. tend to also have to be a, sort of an entertainer too, do you think? Well, I think weather can be entertaining. When it's a nice day, you can have a great conversation with the anchor that you're interacting mm -hmm. with. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, or they can say, hey, Janice, where, where's that uh, five inches of snow you predicted yesterday on my driveway? Uh, so it can be fun, a back right. and forth. But when it gets scary, I think you know it's time that we are delivering a message that potentially could save lives. Right. So Freddie has an interesting... Uh, interaction with his dad. Now, as a child, were you interested in weather? Absolutely. I grew up in Canada where we had a lot of winter storms. Uh, some of them would shut the city down for weeks because we would have ice storms, devastating ice storms with inches and inches of ice on cars and power lines. Uh, there was one devastating ice storm back in 98, I remember, that again, shut the city down for weeks. The National Guard had to come in. It was a, you know, and I just remember thinking, 
how do these forecasters know when this is coming? And, and it was great that the community came together. And so I've always taken that with me and always had an interest. I was always good in math and sciences. And that's when I go out to schools, that's what I tell kids. If you want to be a meteorologist, you have to know your math and you have to know your science. Uh, so I was, very, I was always very interested in those subjects. But certainly weather always affected me. And I always wanted to know the science behind things that happen in the atmosphere. What was the uh, most uh, fun you ever had as a meteorologist? The most fun? Well, I love doing snow angels in the winter. I don't care how old I am. I could be 95 and I'm still going to do a snow angel if we have a few inches of snow on the ground. So I think this was last summer. We had a lot of storms. Or, sorry, this was last winter. We had a lot of uh, winter storms. And I was out there doing my forecasting when the snow was flying. And we had enough snow that I decided I wanted to do a snow angel. So the cameraman, unbeknownst to me, was filming this as I was doing my snow angel, my first of the season. And then they played it afterwards uh, on, on TV. That's a good lead into your, the second book in the series, uh, Freddy the, the Frogcaster and mm -hmm. the Big Blizzard. And so and it's not only a story, but it also, uh, teaches uh, children and adults uh, what they should be prepared for for a blizzard. People are urged to stay indoors. You can't be outside. Uh, they sometimes s close the schools, mm -hmm. and it's always important to have your emergency kit just in case the power goes out. Uh, Freddie does help Polly by giving her an emergency kit. Yes, Polly book. wants to be outside in the blizzard. I want to be out there. And she does. She's out there, but, but Freddie wants to make sure that she is prepared. And so he puts the blizzard emergency kit in the back of their news van just in case Polly gets stuck and she might have gotten stuck. Yes. But I'm not going to give away the spoiler alert. No, we won't. <laughs> uh, but each of the books has a uh, back matter. Do you uh, actually do the back matter or do you have uh, mm. other people come in? And, no, uh, I do it. You it's, do it. I write the whole thing. Now, I do have somebody that, that looks it over and, and, and makes sure that my meteorological accuracy is on point. Right. Uh, but no, I, I write all of it. That, I mean, I'm somebody on television that has to understand what I'm talking about and the science behind it. So I you know, wrote why things happen. What is the criteria for a blizzard? What would you put in an emergency kit? I think that's really important. So when parents or teachers buy the book, there's of course the story, but if they want to learn more and dig into the science behind why weather happens, they can learn that in the back matter. Right, and now you have uh, two children. How old are they? Uh, four and six, Matthew oh. and Theodore. And so have you shared the books with them? Of course, they're my test audience. Yes. Yes, and I've, I've read to their schools. Uh, they love Freddie, and they, you know, they are, uh, they're the reason why I write books. I, I think parents have read, I've read thousands of books to my children, mm -hmm. so I understand what captures their attention. And I also have to say I have the best illustrator in the business, Russ Cox. Uh, really brought Freddie to life with his illustrations. So, um, you know, I wrote the book, but the reason why it jumps off the page is because of Russ. Now, do you have a favorite uh, illustration from the uh, first book? Hmm, I actually really love the cover of the mm -hmm. book. And I have every single cover in, as a, in a frame. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's sort of the first vision I get of Freddie is, is... This is Freddie, right? Here. Yeah, that's him with his umbrella and he's, you know, he's tasting the little raindrop that's falling onto his tongue. Yeah, I, I love that. I mean, every picture in the book is so vibrant and, uh, and colorful. And I mean, you know that it's one thing to write a great book, but if you don't have the images to really attract uh, children and keep their interest, then you know you could have you've written the best book in the world, but it's really about the illustrations. Right. You know, um, blizzards and the, the uh, latest book is uh, hurricanes. They're sort of a uh, scary topic for kids. They can be, but you know, I have gone out to a lot of schools and I showed them the front of Freddie with the hurricane in back. Mm -hmm. And this is what you would see on television. This is a satellite image of the hurricane. You can see the eye. And I showed kids and I said, does this scare you? And they said, no, no, it doesn't. It's not scary at all. It's, for them, it's exciting. It's ex weather is exciting. They want to know more about it. And I think if we can talk to them about it. I had a conversation the other day with a parent who used to live in Tornado Alley. Mm -hmm. And they said that their kids remember going through the tornado drills, but not really understanding 
what is a tornado? So it was more scary to them because they didn't know what they were hiding from. But I think if you can explain why things happen, why we prepare in advance, why it's important to have a safe place if there's a storm coming, then you know it gets them interacting, it gets them involved. And I think that's really important. It's something that you can do with your parents as a family. What's uh, Freddie's future? What's in <gasps> Freddie's future? Oh my goodness, shh, I'll let you in on a little secret. So two more books are in the works. And the fourth one is going to be a tornado. Wow. So Freddie is going to experience a tornado. I think he might visit a cousin of his that lives in an area that has tornadoes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, tornadoes can happen anywhere across the US, right. but there is a specific region we call Tornado Alley across the plains where all of the ingredients come together for severe weather, including tornadoes. So perhaps Freddie might visit somebody uh, near and dear to him that lives in Tornado Alley and, and help them understand why things happen. So that's the fourth book. Mm -hmm. uh, the fifth book is still in development, or can wow. we have people tweet you suggestions? That's a good idea. You know what? When I go out to schools, kids love to tell me their ideas for Freddy's next adventure. So I have an idea what the, the book after the tornado will be, but I would love to hear some suggestions. And uh, what's your Twitter? At Janice Dean. Okay, the weather machine. So how did you get that uh, nickname? Good question. I, I think it was the first or second week that I was at Fox News and my co-worker, uh, Shepard Smith, he, he and I were rehearsing for his show and he knew I was going to be doing weather and he loves weather. He, he wanted to be a weather man. Uh, so he was testing me. And I just remember him going, Janice Dean, Janice Dean, Janice Dean, the weather machine. And everybody started to laugh and it stuck. It stuck since then. So every, you know, Every other anchor calls me that. He's always called me that. Uh, and who knew it would be on the front of a right. children's book? Amazing. Yes. And I guess I owe him some royalties. <laughs> Kids also like hands-on activities. So mm -hmm. I'm sure there's like one or two activities uh, children, parents, or grandparents can do with their uh, with kids uh, to uh, that incorporates weather. Definitely. I mean, they can certainly record what the weather is each day and see what the patterns are, you know, over time, certainly how much snow we got, what the winds were, what the temperature was. Uh, very simple things that you can do. Now this, I happen to have something oh, with me right here. There you go. Uh, this is a rain gauge. And so you can put this outside. Um, you don't want to put it near any trees because sometimes trees have little raindrops that fall and so it's not a, a, a great measurement. It has to be one as accurate as possible. So out typically in an area that's, that's not covered by trees or long grass. And, uh, and then when the rain falls, you can see when the rain stops, how much rain came. So you've got centimeters on there and inches. Um, and that's fun to do. You can, you can see how much rain fell in your neighborhood. Speaking of breaking news, yes, yes we have some breaking news about Freddie, right? Freddie is now a Weather Ready Nation ambassador for NOAA and the National Weather Service. I'm so proud of this because basically they've given him their seal of approval that he is teaching parents, kids, uh, about weather and why weather happens because I think in schools now it's very important uh, for teachers to teach about severe weather events, what we can do to prepare in advance. Uh, so they've recognized Freddie the Frogcaster as a Weather Ready Nation ambassador and so we get to put their logo in every book uh, that, that comes out now and, and uh, all of the books are in every uh, National Weather Service office across the country. Are they? Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Now, NOAA, what does NOAA stand for? The National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration. You pass. <laughs> <laughs> the books, I'm sure, are available on Amazon and... Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, Walmart, they're everywhere. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited. I, I think Freddie is on to big things. Oh, terrific. Well, well, thanks for taking time out of your busy uh, day as a meteorologist and stopping by uh, Kit, Kit Lit here. And uh, we'll be waiting to hear what happens to uh, Freddie next. I hope the future is very sunny for Freddie. Thank you for having <laughs> Thank me. Thank you. Remember, until next time, give a kid a book in any format. <laughs>